I'm dropping a magnet through these three pipes. This one's plastic. This one's steel. Doesn't drop through. This one's copper. The magnet went straight through the plastic tube due to gravity filling it down. In the steel tube, the magnet got attracted to it and wouldn't go through because steel is ferrous, a ferrous metal. And in the copper one, when the magnet went through, it induced a current in the copper, copper tube, which made it turn the copper tube into an electromagnet, which attracted the magnet and slowed it down on its way down the tube. Here we've got a plastic pipe and we've wound a copper wire around it in a coil to see if we can detect the current being induced by the magnets. So we put the magnets in and we'll shake it back and forth and you can see that we're detecting a voltage on this oscilloscope. Here we have a jack cable. This is what we used uh, for the input to the program. We only wanted to use the top and the base. Um, so we cut the wire and we found that there were three wires. There was a screen, a red and a white. Using this multimeter we found that the, um, the screen connected to the base and the red connected to the top. We were then able to use this um, to unsolder and get rid of the white and then create a connection. Yeah, that seems to be producing the pulses we expected. So that's great. We know the hardware is working now. Okay, here we've scaled up the small shaker we had earlier. And um, we've taken a longer tube and made wraps at regular intervals down the tube. And then we've connected the coil, which makes up all these wraps, uh, to an audio plug into the computer. So uh, when we drop a magnet through this, we'll be able to see, like on the oscilloscope, a peak for every coil. So now we'll just demonstrate that. Three, two, one, go. And this is the this is the waveform that is produced by the magnet traveling through. There is a peak for every coil. We also wanted to look into uh, what the difference is in terms of orientation when dropping the magnet through, whether we drop north first or south first through the tube. And so what we did was we recorded two waves produced by north first and south first. The blue represents north, orange south. And we found that um, dropping it north or south first makes a, reflect, a perfect reflection of the other because it means that um, uh, the fields are cutting through in opposite directions since so north will be at top. Here we have a stored waveform which we just produced. There are three methods we can process them to calculate the acceleration due to gravity. Method one uses the formula V equals U plus AT. Method two is, uses the formula V squared equals U squared, U squared plus 2AS. And the third is S equals S plus U T plus half A T squared. We found that method two produced the best results over repetition. We also wanted to investigate whether weight would change it, because we wanted to see whether attaching a weight above the magnet when we dropped it through would uh, change the accuracy of the results. So what we did was we attached different sized weights to the magnet and then when we dropped it through we recorded results for each one. But going across the middle uh, was where we had the, the closest value and it seemed that as, they, as the rods also got longer uh, that might have had an effect due to friction. Earlier we, we weren't sure if increasing the length of the weight changed the accuracy of the results so here we've taken three different length straws we then added a bit of blue tack at the en end of each to counteract the weight difference and then we dropped each down and took results. Despite the fact the masses of the straws are the same, as the length of the straws increases the values gradually get worse. As we know that air resistance increases with velocity, we thought that maybe we'd get a more accurate reading from the first seven coils than from the last seven coils. So we used the first seven peaks of our waveform to calculate G and then the last seven peaks separately to calculate G. And for the same wave, you can see from this table that the first seven peaks give us much more accurate readings than the last seven.